Who are you called to be? What is seeking to emerge through you? What is it that is calling you next in your life to fully show up and to fully express the Spirit of God that dwells within each one of us? Because the truth is you have a unique perspective, you have a unique voice, and you have a unique talent. No one has quite seen the world just as you do. And no one quite has that special something that you have to give. So who are you called to be? The other piece of this is sometimes we think we have all the time in the world to express who we are called to be, and we are mortal beings. I mean, we're immortal in spirit and soul, but the truth is we're in these bodies for a limited amount of time, and we're, we're called here to do our work. So last week when I left you, we were in the belly of the whale with Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the whale. He was called by God, and instead of saying, sure, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll show up, he ran away. He refused his call. He ran in the opposite direction, and when he was on the ship, the seas became turbulent, just as our lives can become turbulent when we refuse the call, when we run away from our destiny or our calling. And so the sailors were concerned and realized something was amiss, and Jonah said, I think it's me because I ran away from God. Throw me overboard. And so they threw him overboard. He's very easy to get along with, I think Jonah is. <laughs> It says, throw me overboard, and a giant fish swallowed him up. So when we left him last week, he was still in the belly of the whale. And the belly of the whale represents the separation from the known world into the unknown. Last week we talked about that place of not knowing and just kind of, you know, uh, Things aren't quite formed yet, and the next phase hasn't ended, but another one hasn't quite fully formed. And the belly of the whale represents that separation from the known and the unknown. One of the things that Jonah realizes while he's in the belly of this great fish is that there is nowhere he can be where God is not. And there is nowhere he can be where his calling is not, just as there is nowhere you can be where God is not. And there is nowhere you can be where your calling is not seeking to express through you. Because you can't ex escape God and you can't escape that calling. The story continues with Jonah calling out to God and um, the fish vomiting him up on dry land. It's very visual, isn't it? It's like... <laughs> and this... this Vomiting up of Jonah onto the dry land represents the crossing of the threshold. Now, in the hero's journey, we have uh, the, the crossing of the threshold, and that means that we leave the known territory into the unknown territory. And if you think about your life, how many crossings of the thresholds have you experienced in your lifetime? hundreds and thousands and over and over again. And it probably began when we were little and we took off for, for kindergarten for the first time or preschool, right? That was, that was crossing a threshold. We cross a threshold when we enter into a new relationship. We cross a threshold when we end a relationship. We cross a threshold when we begin a new job, when we travel, when we retire. Parenthood, having a new baby. Carl is a new, Carl and Andy are new parents, and I'm sure they have now crossed into the threshold of babyhood and, and parenthood. Retirement is a crossing a new threshold. College. And what about loss? You know, loss is another thing that can be a threshold for us. Um, whether it be the loss, uh, uh, the death of a loved one, or a financial loss. You know, how many people in our, in our country have lost their homes? You know, that's the, the financial loss is uh, a crossing of a threshold. Same thing, buying a house is crossing a threshold. Receiving the diagnosis from the doctor when he calls and says, I think you need to come in because your test came back. That is crossing a threshold. So how many of you would say at this moment you're crossing some kind of a threshold? Yes. You're on the hero's journey. 
Crossing the threshold requires us to move beyond what is familiar into what is unknown. And we see it in, in our lives, we see it in literature, and um, probably one of the most popular is Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. You know, she's wanting to get away from her life, and she runs away, and this tornado picks her up and drops her in Oz where she's gone from a world of black and white to color. And she says, we're not in Kansas anymore. Sometimes that tornado experience, the crossing of the threshold, can be viewed as a breakdown, because sometimes it's a breakdown that pushes us into the uh, threshold, being vomited up by a fish. I mean, that's kind of extreme. And John Elrod, Elrod said that a breakdown pushes us forward to who we're really supposed to be. Now say it again. A breakdown pushes you forward into who you are supposed to be, who you are called to be, who we are um, expressing. So who are you called to be? Sometimes that call may be thrust upon us, and we may feel sometimes like, hey, I didn't choose this. This sort of just happened to me, like Jonah. But I think also another uh, person that illustrates this is Jackie Robinson. He was our first African-American ball player. And this is Black History Month, so I think it's important that we, that we highlight some of our African-American <coughs> heroes. He was born in 1919 in the South, and his brother, Jackie Robinson's brother, actually was in the Olympics in 1936, and he won a silver medal. However, his prospects were not so big, so he comes back from the Olympics, and he ends up working as a garbage man, you know, it's, and that really struck Jackie Robinson. He said that um, when he was in the Army, he was actually court-martialed. He was in the army from 1942 to 44. And when he was in boot camp, he was court-martialed because he refused to move to the back of a segregated bus during training. You can see what our, when our calling is our calling, it's always there, isn't it? It's there no matter what we're doing or who we're with, but it's strong in us. And he was later acquitted of the charges and received an honorable discharge. His courage and moral objection to segregation were precursors to the impact that he would have on Major League Baseball. And not just Major League Baseball, but on our culture. So he was initially played in the Negro Leagues because baseball was segregated. And Branch Rickey, who was the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, wanted to integrate Major League Baseball. So he called him and he asked him if he would be willing to be in the Dodgers. However, he said, Ricky knew that there would be difficult times ahead for him. And he made Robinson promise to not fight back when confronted with racism. Now that's a huge, I mean, can you imagine? I, 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 someone told me this morning that they're actually making a movie of his life, which I had not known, but. <clears throat> he not only had to put up with the racial slurs and abuse from the fans and from the other team, but from his own team as well. And yet he showed up in his full talent, in his full gifts, and he, he uh, was an amazing ball player. And even some of his own team members said that they weren't going to play with him. And Leo DeRocher was the manager at the time. And Leo DeRocher said, if you don't play with him, that's fine. I'll trade you, but I'm keeping him. You know, and sometimes we don't stop and look at some of these amazing people like Jackie Robinson and what he did and how he changed uh, how we view uh, life and, and equality. And, you know, we, we honor Gandhi and Martin Luther King all the time, but there's so many other people who have also stepped forward to answer their call. And he answered his call fully as an athlete, and he answered his call fully as, 
as who he was and what he showed us. He said, there is not an America in this country free. There is not an American in this country free until every one of us is free. And he's absolutely right. Sometimes our calling can take the, the um, experience of having to stop and to think and to measure and to look at it first. When Jesus was called into his ministry, the first thing he did after he got baptized by John the Baptist, the first thing he did is he went off into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and he fasted. And Satan appears to him. And Jesus is wondering what his ministry is going to look like. And Satan says, hey, you're hungry. Why don't you take the stones and turn them into bread? And he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from his mouth. And he says, hey, he says, why don't you jump from this mountain? You know the angels are going to come down and pick you up before you even land. No. And then Satan says, why don't you bow down before me and you will rule all the kingdoms in the world. And in unity, we don't believe in a separate power of evil. We don't believe in Satan and the devil. But rather, uh, the devil, Satan, represents that shadow part of ourselves, yes? The ego. And so I think what Jesus was doing was looking at all the different ways that his ministry could unfold, that his calling could unfold. And he sees that, you know what? It's not about razzmatazz and turning stones into bread and... It's not about jumping from a mountain and being saved or having all the kingdoms at his uh, beck and call. It was about service. It was about love. What did Jesus say to love your neighbor as yourself? That the, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And so before he enters into his ministry, he looks over. He looks it over. He faces his ego, and he lets it go. And I wonder if Jackie Robinson had that same experience of having to look over everything in front of him and say, yes, I'm willing to step into this. I feel like not only are many of us individually at a threshold of change, but it feels to me like the world is also at a threshold of change and that collectively we are in this together, that we have reached a tipping point of wanting change and so things seem to be speeding up. Have you found that? It's like things are just so fast and moving so quickly that we're at this threshold to step over and to move to the to the next level of consciousness. That's what we studied when we were doing the emergence um, study last December about awakening and evolving. On January 29th, a young uh, African-American woman named Hydea was shot um, in gang violence. She wasn't a member of a gang. She just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Someone thought she was... Uh, gang member and shot her, and she was this great light at the age of 15 years old. She was this great light. And yesterday, her funeral was live broadcast, and so I watched it. It was like three hours or something. And one of the reasons I watched it was to honor her, but also I'm really interested in how other religions celebrate the end of life and how they do ritual and how it's different. And it was an amazing service the way the community in the south side of Chicago showed up to honor this young woman and her family. They were singing, they danced, they, uh, the, her friends uh, got up and spoke, and dignitaries, not too many dignitaries, a few spoke, not, not so many. It wasn't a political thing. Um, but what everybody said was she was an astounding and amazing young woman, that she was this great light with this bright smile, and there were about nine or ten teenage girls that stood up to talk about her, and every single one of them said, Hydea was my best friend. Hydea was my best friend. Hydea was my best friend. She had a lot of best friends. And of course, the adults were speaking about how she's become the face of violence and that, that you know, we need to take a stand and do something. And it was all well and good, but I think one of the most powerful statements came from a teenage boy who stood up and talked to his peers, and he said, I want to talk to, it's great to hear the adults,
but I want to talk to my peers. I want to talk to the other teenagers in the room. And I want to say that we need to change the way things are. And he was so powerful. And you could see him standing in his calling. You could see the crossing of the threshold. You could feel it for this whole community and for this generation. They ended the service by standing and singing, We Shall Overcome. And I think the, the reason for the singing has changed. Now it's not so much about equality as it is to end violence and to stand in the love that Jesus uh, talked about, to stand in the great light that Hydea was. So I think that collectively we are at a threshold. And crossing a threshold, again, can be preceded by a breakdown. And I think in our society, in a lot of ways, we're seeing all these things kind of breaking down. But remember, John Elrod said to push, a breakdown it pushes you forward so that you can be who you're supposed to be. And are we not being pushed forward collectively? Are we not being pushed forward by society and by the things that are happening in the world so that we can be who we are called and who we are meant to be? Absolutely. So who have you been called to be? You have crossed the threshold over and over, hundreds if not thousands of times, from kindergarten to being a new parent to retiring to traveling. It is in our nature. It is how we grow. The world is changing quickly and rapidly, for we are not in Kansas anymore. The world is not black and white. The world is in color. And as we move forward in this series, I'm going to be talking about listening and synchronicities and that inner knowing like, like Dorothy with her ruby slippers. So I'm going to call our musicians forward because like Jonah in the belly of the whale, there is nowhere we can be where God is not. Like Jonah, like Jesus, like Jackie Robinson, you can't escape your destiny. You can't escape your calling. You may delay it. So my question to you is, who are you called to be? So I'd like to ground this in with prayer. So I invite you to turn your attention within and sit with that question. Who are you called to be? And what is the threshold that is before you right now? Imagine yourself stepping over, taking that first step, leaving the known for the unknown and stepping into freedom. And share the light that was lovingly placed inside me Choosing to bring forth my higher goal I'm learning to forgive And share the light that was lovingly placed inside Choosing to bring forth my higher goal We're free.
share the light that was lovingly placed inside me, choosing to bring forth my higher good. I'm learning to forgive and share the light that was lovingly placed inside me, choosing to bring forth my higher good. We are, we're free. Thank you.